try to focus first on relationships. So relationships are the foundation, we believe, of education. So without solid relationships, we sometimes use coaching analogies. And so it'd be there's a lot of coaches that know the X's and O's, but if they don't have relationships with their players, they usually don't last very long. And so we kind of use that same analogy with teachers. There's a lot of teachers that know a great deal about their content, but we believe they have to build relationships with the students. And so as an administrative team, we do the same thing and build relationships with our staff. So we start there and we look at professional development It's the next portion of it. We have our staff try to dictate, direct to us what they need to get better with professional development instead of an administrative team telling them what they need to get better. So when we give them a voice and a choice and they create the sessions that they want to learn more about and the staff are presenting those sessions to their peers and then the administrative team is just involved with organizing it and then attending sessions. So we talk about relationships with the adults. We also want to give them a voice when it comes to professional development so they can choose how they need to get better and what type of training that they need. The way that the building um, and district leadership is structured is I have my teacher-based teams, which are essentially departments at the high school level. Um, so teachers really developed their PD at the TBT level. I've also learned that I have to be able to articulate um, goals and expectations in a variety of ways um, because each department looks at things differently. Um, I, I was an English teacher early in my career um, and math teachers view things very differently than I do. Um, so learning how to articulate those things really clearly um, has become super important because if I'm not clear, they're not going to be able to navigate the process. So I go back and I meet with each department um, while they develop PD and they develop their goals and give feedback as to yes, this will work, no, this won't. Um, but it is very much a partnership. Um, so every single department in my building, as much as we were working to achieve the same goal, they all did it differently. I guess I began in that shift between when principals were managers and when uh, we started having to be instructional leaders. We had to change how we, um, how we conducted and, and uh, offered professional development. And it was a total collaborative effort. You know, everyone uh, had their roles. Everyone knew exactly what they were um, required to do or expected to do. And uh, the ones that didn't, we spelled it out for them. Um, so in leading that work, it was important for me to become the lead learner, for me to uh, participate in all of the uh, professional development activities that were going along. And um, I would, as I provide some, you know, I would be in there learning right alongside my teachers. A priority for me to set conditions where teachers can rise into leadership roles and where I am present and supportive but not the one who's talking all the time in a meeting, for example. So, um, and you know, in the five years that I've been in this building, I've, we've definitely seen uh, an increase in that. And I think that the, um, the ownership over what happens is far enriched by um, me doing that. And um, part of that, you know, how do I cultivate that is about um, looking for a, a work-life balance looking for, well, what am I trying to get out of work? What am I trying to get out of being a principal? And really getting the I as far away from that as possible. You know, not needing it to be about what I accomplish, what my rating is, what people think of the work I do as building leader. It should really, to me, be almost invisible in a perfect world. So that's what I'm aiming for, consciously.